enzymes are a hugely important topic on the Leaving Cert course and they're very detailed. There's lots of experiments and there's lots of information that you have to remember. So this is just a collection of those key details that students seem to have difficulty with. It's very important that you realise that this video does not cover everything on enzymes. There are three separate videos on this chapter and you have a textbook, but you also have class notes, I'm sure. So make sure you're using all of those resources as well. So a common question is, what is an enzyme? It's a biological catalyst. What is the chemical nature of enzymes? All enzymes are proteins, so protein is the answer. So all enzymes are proteins, therefore they must contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, always nitrogen, sometimes phosphorus and sometimes sulphur. So enzymes being proteins are made up of amino acids and remember there are 20 common amino acids. It's also very important that we can talk about the shape of enzymes. So what is it about their shape that's important? Enzymes are folded into a globular shape and it's really important that you say folded and globular. Shape is key to enzyme activity, so anything that alters the shape of an enzyme is going to impact on the enzyme's ability to catalyse. So let's introduce active site theory. So all enzymes have this uniquely shaped structure, a little bit like a depression on its surface known as its active site, and this is key to how the enzyme catalyses reactions. So active site theory is explaining how the active site on an enzyme works. And if you use active site theory, you can explain enzyme specificity and how the enzyme actually catalyzes a reaction. Each particular type of enzyme has its own uniquely shaped active site and this is the reason why it will only catalyse one type of reaction. Why? Because only one type of substrate molecule, the molecule that's going to get changed, can fit or bind with the active site of a particular type of enzyme. So you could say that the active site of an enzyme, its shape is complementary to the substrate molecule. And this explains enzyme specificity, how enzymes will catalyse only one type of reaction. So when an enzyme and its substrate combine, the substrate molecule loosely binds with the active site of the enzyme. The active site of the enzyme actually changes shape slightly to fit around the substrate molecule better. This is known as the induced fit model. So when the enzyme and the substrate bind together temporarily, they form this enzyme substrate complex. And it's really important at higher level that you do say that an enzyme substrate complex is formed. And this is really establishing perfect conditions for the reaction to go ahead. So the reaction proceeds and the enzyme releases the newly formed product and the enzyme is unchanged. Why are enzymes so important? Well, they're needed to ensure that all our metabolic reactions happen fast enough to sustain life, to keep us alive. There are two important graphs connected with enzyme practicals. One is examining the effect of temperature on enzyme activity and the other is examining the effect of pH on enzyme activity. And you need to be really familiar with the shape of these graphs and it seems to be a continual problem where students are mixing up temperature and pH or drawing temperature very much like pH. So this graph is showing how increasing temperature is affecting the rate of a particular enzyme controlled reaction. It gradually increases steadily until the optimum temperature is achieved or reached and then it declines rapidly. So it's very important that you can explain what optimum temperature is. It's the temperature at which this enzyme is catalyzing at its fastest rate. Very important that you can explain that. So when you look at the pH graph, you can see now that it's completely different to the temperature graph. It is narrower and it's got a higher peak. Another area which always seems to cause problems is the enzyme practicals, particularly examining the effect of temperature and pH. So we use practically the same setup for both of these types of practicals. So the enzyme used in both the pH and temperature practical is catalase. The source of the catalase is celery. Into the graduated cylinder, the same amount of chopped celery would be placed and into this would also be added some buffer solution, the same volume in each case, a drop of washing up liquid and then the substrate, which was hydrogen peroxide. So this practical was looking at the effect of temperature on enzyme activity and a question that's often asked was how did you alter temperature? Well you altered it by using water baths set at different temperatures and you checked each of these using thermometers. 
Another question which often is asked is why did you maintain pH and how did you do it? Well, pH is always maintained in this practical at nine by using a buffer solution. And the reason why you want to maintain pH is because you want to prove that any effect on the rate of reaction is solely down to the changing temperatures. Then when you wanted to test the effect of pH on enzyme activity, we maintained temperature at a constant 25 degrees Celsius by using a water bath and this was checked using a thermometer. We altered pH by using different pH buffer solutions and this was for the same reason. We only wanted to alter pH. We wanted to prove that any change in the rate of reaction was solely down to the pH altering and not down to any other factor. So the practicals are very important and one which seems to to cause lots of difficulty is the denaturation experiment, so revise that. What is enzyme immobilization is another difficult or tricky topic. Enzymes are attached to each other or in an earth substance and can be used repeatedly. Immobilization can be achieved through physical methods and you must give actual examples such as adsorption. The enzymes are physically attached to glass beads or ceramic beads. They're either enclosed in a membrane or they're trapped in a gel like sodium alginate. And also chemically by bonding the enzymes to inert supports or bonding them to each other. So be very careful. This video only contains particular details which I think students don't revise enough or they don't answer particularly well on exam papers. So remember that there are three other videos on enzymes, but there are also Khan Academy videos which are great. You have a textbook and you have class notes, so make sure you use all of those. So the best of luck with all of your revision. Remember, these videos don't replace using your textbook or your teacher's guidance. They are not made for monetary gain or intended for commercial use.